This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. Get my water out of here so our next guest doesn't accidentally drink it. <laughs> All right, our next guest, he is actually one of my favorite speakers, to be honest. I uh, first saw him speak, matter of fact, the first time I saw him speak was on my show. Uh, I, I remember Mike and Jeannie, they were asking me to um, have some of the speakers on, and this is, I just want to tell you, one of the things I love about this conference not all the speakers agree on everything. And to me, that makes it a great conference. That's what iron sharpening iron means. When they said, come let us reason together, that means, hey, we're all a little off, let's perfect this deal. And the fact that Mike and Jeannie have a conference like that, love it. But when I first heard our next guest speak, and I had him on the show, I'm like, wow, this guy's, this guy's smart. So I, I really liked what he had to say. First time I saw him here, I really liked what he had to say. And I know if you have not heard him yet, you're in for a treat. Dr. Michael Lake, our next speaker, is the founder. Wait, wait, wait. You can just hold on a second. He gets a better introduction than just my testimony, right? As if that wasn't enough. Our next speaker is the founder and chancellor of Bible Life College and Seminary, host of Bible Life TV, and co-host of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing Podcast with his wife, Mary Lou. He is the author of the best-selling books, the Shinar, Sh I always mess this up, Shinar <sighs> Directive. And why are you always on the days that I have to announce you? Like last time it was the same thing. I can't get like, whatever. I think you do. <sighs> and this, what's the next one then? See, it's not that easy, is it? <laughs> the Sharif imperative. Please help me welcome Dr. Michael Lake. Bless you, First of all, we need to call security. Somebody stole 20 minutes off my timer. <laughs> Are you guys enjoying the conference? Yeah. You know, one of the things, and then on some of these we actually, are, we speakers get to share with one another every once in a while. And what's so neat is every single speaker here I have immense respect for. That they walk with the Lord, that they've paid a price for where they are. And we, we don't have to agree on every point. Jesus will straighten us all out when we get up there. But each one of us have a piece of the puzzle. And there is, there is a wealth, there is a tapestry that God is putting together with this conference, and that's how you begin to move in kingdom. Now, I'm going to give a kingdom intelligence briefing today, and the first half of it I'm going to call the poop head briefing because we're going to deal with what the enemy is doing, then I can get into kingdom. <laughs> and how many listen to the kingdom intelligence briefing? Now, tell everybody why you listen to it. Mary Lou, right? <laughs> Uh, I tried to do it for a year or so by myself, and the thing came alive when she came on, and we have so much fun together. 
and, and this, the, the, the anointing of God flows. But I really want to get in today on AI and the hive mind to begin with. And in the book of Revelation, he says, and he gave power, he had power to give life into the image of the beast. And we have pondered for quite a while what that's going to be. You know, and is, is it going to be an automaton? Is it going to be a robot? Is it going to be a hunk of mud? What is it going to be? And I'm going to try to get into that a little bit today of some possibilities of what it can be. And that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And no man could buy or sell or save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Now, there's a lot of things that we can look at historically about the mark of the beast and, and this image of the beast. What's interesting is when you look at the, that wasn't supposed to be there. We're going to come back to that here in a minute. No? Before I get into this, I put the, I put the images together this morning about 5 o'clock. <laughs> one of the things the elite do, and this is one of the things that uh, I bring out in the Shadar Directive, whenever you deal with classified material, I'm, I'm ex-military, uh, you, you can have all the way up to top secret. Everybody knows what top secret is. But what you don't realize is there are levels of security above top secret. One of them is called compartmentalization. And let's say that I and Josh Tolley are working on a specific project and it is above top secret and it is compartmentalized. When we're in that room working together, we can, we can talk about that. Now we're given just a piece of the puzzle. We can talk about it openly. We're dealing with issues. The moment that we leave that room, even if we're talking to one another, what is in that room does not exist. Complete compartmentalization. And so one of the things the elite have done globally is they have all these different groups, sometimes even competing nations that are in, race, that are in uh, arms races, developing pieces of the puzzle, but they don't have the whole puzzle. They just have one component. It's only the ones behind the curtain that are pulling the strings that have, that understand the full plan and how that this piece from Russia is going to fit with this piece from China as well as connect with this piece in America and that when we pull it all together, we will be able to do whatever we're planning to do. And as I begin to look at this, some of the things that we want, I want to look at today is, is a possibility of how the image of the beast is going to work and understanding what it is. And it's going, to, it's going to involve artificial intelligence. It's going to involve the hive mind. Anybody ever hear of the hive mind? Transhumanism and transhumanists are, are, is all about becoming human 2.0, 3.0, or whatever, whatever direction they're wanting to go. We hear a lot about 5G, quantum internet, Blockchain, anybody here at blockchain? Okay, blockchain, one of the uses is going to be cryptocurrency. Okay, they're going to move toward that because you have to have that to have a universal currency. But what nobody's connected is blockchain is going to be instrumental for the universal ID. You're going to be blockchain. Okay, Internet of Things. How many of us have an iPhone, whatever? And that, that's an inter, that is a, a, a part of the things of the Internet, right? But once it's all networked, their plan is you're going to become an Internet of things. See, each piece is a piece of the puzzle. And when you, when you look at it, what's amazing, people like Elon Musk is, is saying, we don't want AI. I don't want anything to do with AI. AI, have, have you not watched sci-fi? We don't want to invent Skynet. We don't want to involve these things. But you know, his company may be actually developing pieces and the components that he doesn't think has anything to do with AI, that he's actually building part of their systems because he doesn't get to look behind the curtain. And so one of the things I want to do today is, from my viewpoint, is trying to figure out possibilities of how all these things can knit together. And when you do, you begin to see a picture that becomes a false God, a false body of Christ, a false Holy Spirit. And it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. 
I want you to think about that. On a planet that you can't hide, on a planet that you've been blockchained and you can't edit it, you can't escape from it, and you, 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 know, you can't do, like, do a facial recognition, you can shave your beard and you can put you know, a little black hair and a little black hair and it messes it up and it can't recognize you, all that's going to be history pretty soon. We need to understand these things that are going on and what, with, with the threat that we have of AI. And let me tell you something, we're, there are a lot of us that are um, dealing with AI on a daily basis and you don't even know it. Did you know for some of us you call your credit card company and that sweet little lady you think, thank God I didn't get a computer. And man, she knows all about you. Well, Mr. Lake, we're, it's, it's been three months since we've, we've had any problems with you. How can we help you? I see you've done this and you've done that. There may not even be a human that I'm talking to. The computer, the moment that I called in the A, I pulled up my history of everything that's going on. And she, you know, how's your wife, Mary? All that's going on. And we think it's Barb down in Cincinnati. You know, that's like the, the old days, you got somebody from India and his name is John. You know, <laughs> you know at least now they're signing, you know, and they're getting put out of business because AI is taking over. AI is beginning to give business solutions that they're, they're, they're confessing. Listen, the top experts in the world can't figure this out. We ask an AI, and the AI gives a solution that no human would ever do, but when you do it, it works. That's where we're headed, and that's some of the things that we need to prepare ourselves for. Now, a lot of times the, in the old school, when they would read the, the image of the beast, we, we would think of the old story of the golem that the rabbis talk about, and which is significant because you have God took mud, put it together, breathed life in it, and Adam lived. Okay, so there's this creation story of becoming godlike and creating. And so now man is saying, I'm going to create something in my image, yet it's going to be superior to me. And within, within Kabbalic legend, uh, part of it is, you know, they, there's different stories and it, it really varies. But one of them is, if you know how to say the tetragrammaton, you know, is it Yahweh, Yahovah, Yah, you know, uh, Yahweh, Jesus cleared it up for us. He said, call him Father. Because by the time Jesus came along, because of, of, the, word of uh, the name of God being so abused in Babylon, in fact, where we get the word Yahoo, was that the Jews were made fun of, and it so grieved them that they called them Yahoos, they quit saying the name. So the time we get to Jesus, they had quit saying the Tetragrammaton, yod heh vav -Heh which encoded in, in, the, in the name is he is the God who will be revealed twice with a nailed hand. yod heh vav -Heh. And Jesus didn't pull him aside and say, let me show you the secret sauce. He said, believe in me, call him Father. And so sometimes a lot of the things, and, and how do we exactly when we say it, you know we're going to find out for absolutely sure when he shows up. And then we're going to know is we're going to, you know, we're going to look back at a lot of the arguments we have had over things. And we're going to say, I was still in kindergarten. It's like two kids fighting over a piece of candy. When there's bigger things, there are bigger fish to fry that we need to be involved with in the kingdom. How did I get off? Of? Okay. Oh, yeah. They would say the sacred name and it would come to life. And part of that was saying if you let it live one day, it calls you master. You let it live two days, it calls you friend. You let it live three days, it calls you slave. And so that kind of goes in with the golem motif. But I, I think what, what we're seeing with AI and that they have been very braggadocious about it. They're, they're looking for that singularity. That it becomes self-aware. And the very ones, and this gets me about atheists and scientists. They deny the God of the Bible. Yet they're constantly working on either creating a God or becoming one. So why are you spending all your time trying to become or make what you deny exists? It's ridiculous. But they're driven to do it. There is a force behind them. And I want to look at a couple of slides, if I can advance to the right ones here. 
An AI God will emerge by 2042 and will write its own Bible. Will you worship it? Now, because of 5G, they have changed the date, and Kurzweil has churned, changed the date to 2030. At the same time, the UN has moved their 2020 thing to 2030. Everybody's going to 2030 like there's a bullseye on that date. And there's a lot of things that they're trying to put together. Here's another one. Des Ex Machina, former Google engineer, is developing an AI god. And it moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> it does. It comes up with solutions that a human would never figure out. Here's another one. God to be replaced by AI, new religion to be created by computers. This and, and, you know, you go and you search this on Google, and I had millions of articles that I could have chose. These are just random that are on there. They're being quite blatant about it. Is AI a threat to Christianity? Let me tell you something. I don't care what AI that you build. He is no match for Almighty God. If God could have a bad day, the AI still would not have a chance. Come on now. Now, I'm going through a lot of this quickly because I want to get to the good stuff, okay? Let's, let's deal with what they're doing so that we can begin dealing with another one. There's some other things that I'm beginning to hear. They're talking about hive mind. I, I first became aware of this with some DARPA projects. They wanted to be able to give soldiers hive mind. That means they turn them into drones and they move as a single force with a guy back somewhere in Langley or whatever now in Denver because they moved everything that we found out at lunch today. Uh, they, the, the guy sat in their back with a joystick moving them in. In fact, there was, a, there was a series on TV for a while called Dial House, which dealt with MK Ultra, that kind of thing, kind of a little bit different version of it. And part of what they ended up having were these troops that were dolls that were taken up because they were ex-military, they were programmed with a hive mind, and the men had a hard time fighting the influence of the, of the overlord of the hive mind with what they're supposed to do. But what's interesting about this article that they bring out. Let me see if I can find the right page here. And this is from the article because humans, although they say it would be beneficial for humans to have hive minds because, you know, a single bee can be stupid, but you get a whole hive of bees, this swarm mentality, they can figure out complex issues that are beyond the single bee. So wouldn't it be great if humans could do that? If we could all just get together, we, we could use our combined computing power to solve world problems. Here's the problem. We pride ourselves in being rational thinkers with an inherent sense of morality that guides our actions toward the greater good. These virtues are true uh, across all levels of society, yet collectively, on a global scale, we often make self-destructive decisions. He goes on to say, this begs the question, how can uh, immoral decisions emerge from a society comprised overwhelmingly of moral individuals? Philosophers have been pondering this for ages. Nietzsche lamented madness is rare in individuals, but in groups, political parties, okay, um, nations and eras, it's the rule. And so they go from Nietzsche, they, bring, they jump over to a renowned American theologian, Reinhold Nuremberg, was uh, even more blunt, expressing the group is more arrogant, hypocritical, self-centered, and more ruthless in the pursuit of its ends than the individual. One of the things I learned in the military is you can, you can make sense with an individual. Like if, if I'm dealing and there's a crisis, I can make sense of an individual. A crowd is stupid. A crowd will turn on you in a minute and kill you. That's why you have to always maintain control. And so this is from the Singularity Institute where they're trying to actually get all the scientists together to bring about the AI singularity. And they say, well, here's what we have learned from the internet. And have anybody ever seen social media go the wrong way? <laughs> I don't mess with it anymore. It's like, you know, there, there's some people that I really love, but uh, <laughs> there's some that is just, it's, it's shown the worst in us because they can't come beat you up, you know? I mean, some, I, I've, had, I've had people say some things to me, either in an email 
or on uh, or social media that it was face to face, it'd be on. Okay. I'll repent later, but there's, there's, you know, especially you don't mention Mary Lou in a negative context. It's, it's on. All right. And they, they have the audacity to do that because they're setting a thousand miles away. Usually it's a 45 year old living in his mama's basement, but let's, let's uh, get on to other things. Um, but it, it, we, we see it in schools that kids begin harassing somebody because there's a bully and all the kids jump in on it to the place the child commits suicide. And so they're saying, how can we have this hive mind without it going bad? And then so you bring up places like Reddit and everything that people don't realize you have an AI manipulating the conversation to bring out the good, to, to, to gently escort the conversation to get everybody focused on the right things with this premise we can have a hive mind to benefit humanity as long as it is guided by an all wise AI I read that and went oh no because they're, 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 they, they take steps they're guiding us someplace They want to create a God. And what I eventually believe we're going to have D-Wave and a lot of these things to come together. I, th I think CERN, and I agree with Anthony Patch, I think CERN has, and, and has two main components that they're doing. Number one, there's a prison that God created that we find in the book of Enoch. That, you know, the, we, we know that in the book of Enoch, after 70 generations, they were going to begin to be released. I think it's a progressive releasing, but I think that they're not satisfied with that progressive releasing so they're trying to crack God's prison and men's hearts will begin to fail for that which comes upon the earth stuff that he worked to release himself the other I believe that I believe there is no computer there is no programming on the planet I don't care if it's D-Wave quantum whatever whatever else want them that they want to do I do not believe that it in itself can, re can achieve sentience. But I believe that they can build a construct that a watcher can inhabit and assume its place as a god upon the earth that serves over a digital domain. And so, but you have to have also, if you have a god you want to be connected to that God. Right? You see, it's an imitation, a poor imitation of what we have in Jesus. The day that you made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life and really got right with him and you weren't playing with him, it wasn't a 30 second prayer. It was, and I, I think we need to let people sit on their knees and cry and squall and ball gut until they get it right. Because we have a lot of sinners get up from the altar and they've not repented, they've responded to an emotional appeal and they get up a sinner and now they're running churches. That's part of the problem that we're having today. You stay at the altar and you wrestle with God until God touches the hollow of your thigh and you get up and you walk away a different man because your walk has changed. But when you do, the Holy Ghost moves in and you're connected to God. God moved on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit moved on the inside of the aspect of God that is extremely knowable. It empowers everything that he does on planet Earth. Well, they got to imitate that. 5G is more than just your cell phone. You know, they already got plans beyond 5G. I've got an article that I, just, I finished reading here about a month ago. They said 5G is the first step, and they're already putting the components into 5G for the upgrade. It's called quantum internet. What does that mean? You get at the quantum level. Quantum level is perfect for blockchain because with blockchain, you're not supposed to be able to hack it. The minute that you touch it, it's, your, your, your digital fingerprints are permanently recorded on it. And all you need is a little bit of the data of the blockchain, of the blockchain. You can put it on another computer and it will replicate itself to replace all the information that you thought you deleted. And when you look at blockchain and look it up on Wikipedia, they give, they give uh, uh, a, a Japanese name, which is a pseudonym for the creator of blockchain, but he doesn't exist. 
And some have said, you know, it's this guy, it's this crew, it's this crew. Many researchers are now beginning to believe that it was AI that developed the concept of blockchain to begin with. And it's going to go well beyond currency. It's blockchaining whoever is digitally connected. But when you begin dealing at, with quantum encryption, quantum encryption goes beyond blockchain. Let's say I'm going, let's say John here has something in, that's quantumly encrypted and I'm going to try to hack it. The moment I reach out and touch it, my blockchain ID is permanently attached to it and he's immediately notified that I touched his data. Not even that I was able to unencrypt it because you can't quantum encryption, but you can't even touch it without the owner being immediately notified. And when you get into quantum internet, that means it is going to be, it, it, is, it, it goes beyond the 5G radio waves. It's going to blanket this planet at the quantum level with, with connectivity. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans. As the powers of Mystery Babylon gathered to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the Son of Perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the Remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious Church. It is time for the remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with heaven's power to withstand The Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.